Hello, welcome to my video. I am going to tell you every single item combination you can use to skip the pillars with that I could think of. I'm not using any survivor abilities for this video. Except for hooks and strides because I count them as lunar items. This is going to be a really long video, so I suggest you look at the timestamps here or in the description if you want to jump to any of them. I got inspired by iCap's video to make this one, and I really recommend you check him out because he makes really good informative Risk of Rain videos. This video is meant for characters who don't have a good method of skipping pillars, like Captain, Engineer, or Commando. There's a big variety of movement speed items that boost your movement speed. I'm going to use Gold Hoose as my base measurement, while occasionally showcasing how to activate more specific movement speed items. I'm also showing how all of these items compare in Gold Hooves. Tonic may slow you down with affliction, but it doesn't matter because you can always just use it again. Killing a perfected enemy with vultures gives you shared design for a few seconds. And now I'll fly around and quickly show you some of the places you'll be visiting often throughout this video. I call this one the NG Tower. It's good for running into with high movement speed. This is the Merc Slope, very good for gaining vertical height. This is the Merc Rock next to it. I used to use the front of the rock, but using the back is way better. Here, I put equipment perils on all the spots you can stand on. But for most of the time, you're only going to use the one that's in the middle. This is a solar roof. That spot between the rocks is where I do my headset jumps from. This right here is the solar edge to the right of solar roof. Keep in mind the rock to the left. On the light part you can stand on and on the dark part you fall off. If you do Shine of Order here, and you get over 42 wax, I'm going to show you how to get to Mythric safely. Using the back of the rock there is also completely fine.
make the angle as tight as possible without hitting the wall. With even more max, you want to try to jump earlier, so you don't overshoot it. Here is the wax to hoof ratio. We're gonna go from left to right, starting at 42 wax. I jump into the wall here so I don't go all the way to the ceiling and take fall damage. Keep the angle as tight as possible without hitting the wall. Jumping with wax becomes really fun when you practice. When it comes to Murkrock, stand on the darker part on the ground and aim for the white part on top of the rock and you'll get it all the time. Most of the jumps look very similar, so I will skim through most of them. Here I jump to the middle of the tree. I aim at this corner above the tree, and then I run and jump. And you can gain great heights doing it this way. And you can start doing this at around 5 loops. I stop running in the middle of the ramp, so I don't hit my head on the ceiling again. From the NG tower, it's possible to do it with 30 hooves, but I have the extra tree to help me out at the top part. This is also one of my least favorite ways to do it because it's really inconsistent and hard to pull off. When you run off the edge, you want to quickly turn around and tap the back of the wall to gain a little extra height.
it takes eight feathers to get to the middle. I'm going to show you how acceleration impacts wax quails and hooves. They all gain the same amount of distance, but they all are different when it comes to gaining height. It takes multi 232 wax to get to the top. It really hurts to add more hooves to multi here, so I'm gonna cheat and just use this shift. Artificer needs twice as much wax as normal. Her passive is going to help a lot to actually get on the top here. And it takes her around the same amount of hooves as for a multi. Heretic needs less items than normal, thanks to her base movement speed and extra jumps. You can also use your wax quails multiple times in the air because they all count as base jumps. The reason why 
multi and artificer are bad with using max quills is because of their base acceleration. If I set them back to 80, which is the default, the wax quells become the same number as any other survivor. And that covers the Wax to Hoof Ratio. If you don't want to skip the tree slope bit, you can use the Merc Slope to jump on top of the tree. Now I will include Tonic. You're able to pull this off with only one use of the equipment if you're fast enough. If you can't quite make it to the top from the Merc Rock, you can jump to the middle of the tree and from the middle of the tree to the top again. I also honestly thought that Tonic would be a lot more useful for getting extra, extra movement speed, but from my testing, it only seems to help a little bit. I usually need 30 hoops, but thanks to the tonic I can use it and get to the top of the tree, no problem. The more hoops you have, the more effective tonic seems to be as well. That powers tonic. If you add one more hoof to the tree slope bits, you can skip them and just use Murkrock instead. Just showing off knockback Hooks has. It's important to time your hook to shoot right after. You jump from the rock. And again here, you wanna time your hook to go off right after you jump to gain that extra vertical height.
we jump to the middle of the tree again, and notice how I use my pings to see which parts I can stand on so I don't fall off by accident. You can use the soul roofs, or you can use the tree slope again to get to the middle of the tree and jump up, but I find it's much easier to do it from here. Now I'm going to add one magazine to our hooks, so we can shoot two in the air. You can simply hold down to fire both of them. You need to hit sprint each time you fire, because firing it makes you walk. Just showing for fun how attack speed can help books as well, but you're gonna need more magazines for it to be useful. Now I'm going to show you how Peon can help you gain extra height. It works very similar to hooks.
You don't need the fuel cell here, but you would have to wait for your equipment to go off cooldown, which is 140 seconds. Shooting the Brian backwards helps a lot with horizontal speed. Here I'm using the middle of the tree so I can save my shot for the next part. With these items, Wax 2 and 1 don't do much anymore to help you gain extra vertical height. Even though the Freon is stronger than Hooks, you can only shoot it once and you can only shave off one feather this way and the hooks can shave off too. Now we're going to include one fuel cell so we can shoot two of them at once. I forgot to record audio for this bit. The good thing about Hooks and Freon is that if you press them both at the same time, they activate at the same time too, so it's very easy to time. Unless you have more attack speed, then you'll need to time them differently again.
Here's me using hooks, prion, one mag, and one fuel cell. You don't need to use hooks for this bit, you can do it with 8 batters alone. Now I'm going to compare every item setup I've used so far. And then we keep going with strides starting at 30 wax.
Make sure you're sprinting when you're using strides, because sprinting makes strides go faster. Getting the timing for this is tricky. You wanna time it so you slide against the slope with barely touching the top. This will buy you enough time to use strides again. With two strides, it's very similar. Now I'm using 3 strides. And now with four strides.
You can skip the Matrix with 5 strides alone. Having afterburners makes using strides really easy. With enough cooldown reduction and hooves, you can start gaining height and fly infinitely. And the purple line means that you don't gain height and you don't fall down much. Artificer can use only one stride to skip to Mythrix, but you're also giving away a really powerful tool, which is the Ice Wall. Here are all the hooves and cooldown reduction you need to skip to Mythrix. Keep in mind the little bar named Useful, because behind this bar, you can just use the hooves alone to get to the top. And I'm just going to show off all the strides from before, just to compare them. And now we use headset, which helps a lot. With hooves only, you have a great amount of control on how much height you want to gain depending on when you press your jump.
when using headset and feathers, it's more beneficial to walk off first and then use your jump to gain more vertical height. For this setup, you want to place the FHA right underneath this blue spawn. You run towards it, you press Q and jump at the same time, and you can skip the soul thanks to Wrinkle this way. Artificer needs a bit more wax because of her acceleration. And Multi needs a little bit more items than Artificer does. Heretic needs a little less items, thanks to her extra speed and extra jumps.
Strides doesn't help head stompers too much, but it still helps a little bit if you happen to have them. Here I'm going to show the distance for each amount of flags you have. And here are the same sizes from the inside of the soul's pillars. Good to note that even though you're really high up in the air and you level up mid-air, the flags will always spawn on the ground below you. If you want to level up from the inside of the soul pillars building, you wanna level up inside this area. This is going to be just barely enough for me to make the jump. If you kill a perfected enemy with Wake of Vultures, it gives you 30% extra movement speed for a few seconds. With a single bandolier, you can use any skill you have twice in a row. As long as you pick it up moments before the cooldown is over, it will remember the duration for the next time you use your skill. I'm using 10 bandoliers here as an example, but you can attempt this at any time as you're getting here.
since you cannot take any fall damage with headset, I use Hellfire Tincture to activate my stealth kit instead. There are some items that makes you take less damage from Hellfire Tincture. And having a single ignition tank damages you way past your full HP, but it doesn't kill you. You can also attempt to damage yourself by getting hit by enemies, but this can be very dangerous. Now I'm going to get very in-depth about fall damage in commencement. The maximum amount of damage you can take without barrier is 90% because of one shot protection. With full HP and barrier, the fall damage caps out at 180%. Now I'm going to show you how much fall damage each item reduces. On Eclipse 3, your fall damage gets doubled, but you can turn it back to normal with a single opal. But keep in mind that fall damage is still lethal and will kill you. You can avoid fall damage completely by getting transcendence. You will lose the same percentage of HP no matter how much curse you have. Also, don't do this if you have a delicate watch or a power elixir, because you don't want to lose them. I'm going to show you how I activate Stealth Kid to get those 3 extra hooves. With Cell Kits, you usually want to land as close to your jumping point as possible, so you can quickly pull off the jump without any enemies hitting you. I'm going to start including random defensive items that makes this harder to pull off, but still possible.
Panua doesn't really get any way of getting fall damage. But I'm only going to have trouble here because I have so low health. And same with Repulsion Armor Plates, they're not going to give you trouble if you have a lot of HP. You need to draw two Forgive Me Pleases at once to activate Berserker's Pauldron. And the drum gives the same Warcry buff, but it's easier to activate. And with the drum, everyone gets the Warcry buff. With Hunters and Forgive Me Please, you might have to start adjusting your angle because if you don't, you might start hitting your head against the ceiling. And if this happens, you want to make the angle just a little bit bigger so you don't go up as high. At 5 hooves or more, you don't need to adjust your angle anymore. Thank <laughs> you. 
Make sure you wait until your wire cry buff is active. Time to talk about strides and bandoliers. You can try doing it the risky way if you're feeling lucky, or if you have enough bandoliers and fuel cells to spare. Taking a skill refresh right before your skill cooldown hits zero, you can do the same skill twice in a row. And it starts to become much safer to pull this off. It's also possible to use his skill three times in a row. You just have to take one before his skill cooldown hits zero. Use strides and take a box right after. If you're playing with a friend, he can throw the forgive me please onto you. And if he has fuel cells, he can throw a maximum of 3 onto you for a higher chance for bandoliers to activate.
If you're using FHE to skip to Mystrix, I recommend you use these two supports here, because if you go to the side that's away from the ship, you're gonna slide off of the pillars, unlike the one on the left, which you can still stand on. And here's the amount of time you had to wait for FHE to cool down. It's much safer to place the platform first if the terrain becomes more slanted. Pillar skipping without any feathers is one of the hardest things I've done in this video. This spot right here is also very nerve wracking, but you want to make sure you're standing at the tip. You jump once without moving and then you press Q. Also note where my cursor is pointed at. It's slightly above where the pillar is resting. I want to thank this person for figuring it out first. If it wasn't for this video, I would have not figured this out myself.
using effigy with strides is like using a single feather. Less than 4 minutes is good, because you're constantly moving while it's on cooldown. You can do something similar with the backup equipment. When using the backup on ground level, your drones start to fly around like crazy. But if you do it high up enough, they won't move at all and they can act like platforms you can stand on. The drones can dip down if you fall too close to the edge of them. And you need at least two feathers to get this high up so the drones won't move. If you're using three to four fuel cells with two feathers, you wanna wait standing on your drones for a little bit to let your cooldown finish for your equipment so you can use it more times in the air. And the drones last for 25 seconds. All the ones that are doable are worth doing. Now we move on to Volcanic Eggs. If you have a Volcanic Egg but no fuel cells, if you manage to reach up to this point, you can use your egg to reach the top.
With headset, you make better use of your feather if you walk off first and then use your jump. Having just one field cell is enough to skip to Mystrix. If your friend has a volcanic egg, you can use him as a platform if you time it just right with your friend. That's it for Volcanic Egg. You can jump on the head of a Gubu Jr. copy of yourself. All you need is one wings and nothing else to skip the matrix. If you have no field cells or no movement speed, you have to wait here for a little bit. With six hooves, you can fly straight to the top. If your friend has wings, you can stand on their heads to reset your feathers and gain extra height. If it's you and your friend has enough feathers, you can start jumping off of each other's head to reach the top. And this is extremely difficult to pull off. Here's me and my friend communicating with each other while pulling this off. Let me land on your head. 
Alright, let's go. Alright, land on my head. Got it. Now I'm landing on your head. Got it. Don't land on my head. Got it. Let me land on your head. Got it. Now I'll land on my head. Got it. Now I'll land on your head. Going to the wall. Got it. Oh, did you get it? Oh, wait, did he? Yeah! Oh my god! Thank you. We got it. And I got it oh, this time. Shit. And I... At first, I tried to use empathy cores just by jumping on them, but they stop following you at some point and just kind of stay there. And the cube doesn't seem to affect them either, even if I have Artifact of Chaos on. Although, then I discovered that Black Hole does work on these Lunar Chimeras. Although they can be a little bit buggy. Stun grenades don't work on Lunar Chimeras. But some items can help you land on them. This is one of the spots I like because Lunar Chimeras cannot hit you from here and you can easily jump on them. You need to use your cube at least one or two times to get high enough so they don't go back down. If Lunar Chimeras are too close to you, they don't seem to attack you at all, which is very helpful. This is another spot I like to do this from. Even though Lunar Chimeras can get stuck inside the house sometimes, at least they cannot really shoot you while you're up there. Here I'm just going to show you that it's gonna try going back down if you're not high enough. Once you are high enough, you can just wait there and let your cubes recharge. Once a Lunar Chimera gets high enough, it doesn't seem to move anymore and get stuck up there. But it will still attack you if you get close enough. The waste is the best equipment for skipping the pillars. You can visit the shop by hitting the mountain behind it. And 
standing on the same mountain, you get a really good angle to skip the myth tricks. If your friend is still down there, what I like to do is I like to jump off a bit and then use my waist and go into it at the same time. But if you have headers, you can just use those to jump back to the arena. Be mindful of fall damage on your way down. You'll have an easy time going through the portal while falling if you hold the E, and you press Q at the same time. It is less consistent if you aim straight, but it works again if you're aiming downwards. Chaos Puddle has 19 equipment it can activate at random. You have a 5.25% chance of getting waste if your equipment isn't in this pool. But if your item is one of the items from the pool, then your chances increases to 5.5% chance. And here are all the items you can use to aim upwards with. And I calculated the probability of getting waste over 6 minutes. Because that's the amount of time it usually takes to do the pillars normally and to use the jumping pad. Having different amounts of cooldown items on your equipment or more chaos bottles affects your chances of spawning waste as well. When your chances are low, I suggest you do pillars normally and just hit the top of the tower here and there. It's also good to try to go for an FHG by popping up some lunar pads around the soul pillars because the FHG has the lowest cooldown equipment in the game. And on Eclipse you have a slightly higher chance to get it because Eclipse gets rid of one of the lunar items. And doing it from this corner is also best. You can take your original equipment afterwards. Because each tunnel lasts 30 seconds and that's more than enough time. If you get a bad lunar equipment from one of the pods, and your friend has a equipment that has a low cooldown. You can ask him to switch it with you by using the bad lunar equipment. So you can pick it up and you can start using it to lower your cooldown.
And if you replace your equipment with a card, it replenishes all of your charges at once. Card can also be useful when used with the caffeinator. Although you need to use two different equipments to set this up. It can easily be done with two players. Shipping request forms also work with this. Sometimes the shipping request form appears closer to the tree, and I recommend you have some movement speed items when you're close to it. Another nice thing about card is that it has a chance to spawn in another caffeinator soda machine, so you have even more chances to so get waste from it. Some monsters got in their way here, and messed up my chance. I made this circle out of block pillars. It represents the rim of the arena above us. Using waste inside the circle makes it harder to get to the top, because you either hit your head or overshoot it. Once you've killed Mithrix, I sometimes like to come here just to hit Shrine of Order for fun. With the artifact of chaos turned on, you can use the caffeinator to escape the matrix. Although you have to be wary with the items you're using, with polyloot being the most dangerous, needle tick and bleed also being very dangerous and could very easily kill you. Shatter spleen can also cause crit on you, especially with crit chance. These items are more of an, an annoyance, but they don't kill you. ATGs don't seem to be much of an issue either. Plasma Shrimp is also safe to use because it doesn't proc on you. You cannot use the Caffeinator at the Soul Edge because it goes through the roof. The alternative would be this workshop roof here, which works very similarly to Soul Edge. Headset works the same way here as it does on Soul Edge.
It's a bit hard and a bit inconsistent to do it with hooves only, but it's possible. You just have to put the caffeinator a little bit away from the edge and run straight. Now I'm going to include hooks for caffeinator. There's multiple indicators to help you tell when you jump. The glowing ball about to shrink, the white light about to hit down, and the down. Some of the indicators you can use when you jump are the sound, the little glowing yellow ball. When it completely disappears, you can jump. I recommend using hooks with hooves only because you're going slow enough that the hooks can actually hurt you and get you killed. Headset and caffeinator are really powerful together. With head stompers and caffeinator, you don't need any items to skip the matrix. You do have to hold E. Just a little bit, but not enough to activate it, to stall in the air for a little bit longer. But having either one hoof or one wax makes it way easier. With one wax, you can use any slope you want, as long as it's really close to the arena above. When using Forgive Me Please, you want to make sure you don't have gasoline because it gets you killed. And the same self damage rules applies for Forgive Me Please as it did with Caffeinator. If you're hitting your head against the ceiling with the setup, you want to increase the angle a little bit so you don't jump as high. Even when you throw it slightly further away, it still seems to happen at the same time. I'm gonna do the Voodoo Wisp combo with headset.
and that was every single way I could think of to escape the pillars. Here are the last statistics I made. On my next video, I will be using every single survivor, and then use every single one of their loadouts to see what they can do to skip the pillars. I hope you enjoyed watching, I'll see you next time.